Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. So happy to be back from vacation. Um, if you have, it probably doesn't feel like I've left because I did have videos um, post almost daily while I was gone, um, but I, you know, haven't been in front of a camera in over a week, so it feels good to be back, and I am really happy to uh, to see you guys again. Um, if you left a comment over the week uh, and I didn't, Get a chance to respond go ahead and leave your comment again in this video and because um, I'm thinking about looking back at all the comments from the last week and it's honestly a little daunting to to uh, think about trying to answer a week's worth of comments in one go so if you had something pressing a question please go ahead and leave it here to make sure that I see it I always do my best but I'm not perfect uh, so I was on vacation over the week my family and I rented a cabin and we do this every summer it's wonderful and we just get away and relax and uh, my kids fish, my husband fishes, we boat, we um, relax, swim, that sort of thing. It's just an extremely relaxed, chill week and I crave it and I love it and it's just, I feel completely renewed and refreshed. So uh, one of the things, I, had an, I did an experiment this vacation, I always bring art supplies to for myself and little art bags for my kids to um, to create with while we're gone and I said this time, you know, I am going to bring my Cotman watercolors because anytime I mention Cotman on a video, somebody goes, meh, 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 meh. Cotmans aren't any good. They're horrible. Don't waste your time with Cotmans. Meh, 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 meh. And honestly, I'm so sick of hearing people complain about Cotman watercolors. I like, I'm not affiliated with Windsor and Newton. In fact, they, every once in a while, their PR department contacts me and asks me if I'll, you know, promote them for free, which I decline. Um, but I do recommend the Cotman watercolors because for one, they're inexpensive. For two, you can find them almost anywhere around the globe and three they're reliable oh four they actually list the pigments that are used in the paints and five they're quite light fast so you're not really compromising that much when you use Cotman's versus an artist's watercolor you know there is a little bit the, the tinting the pigment strength is not going to be as great but it's not bad so I did all my paintings this week with Cotman watercolors and I wanted to just start off by um by showing you what is in my set so the big the big boxes would be the colors that are in my set now my Cotman watercolor set is the 24 full pans and it came I got it in the late 90s um, I have refilled a couple of the colors I refilled the ultramarine the sap green and the alizarin crimson um, and I may and I use a permanent alizarin crimson because that's kind of a that's a you know how like food has their dirty dozen you know food you're not supposed to eat or you're supposed to buy organic well well, there's also like a dirty dozen in paint and I'll have to like make a list somewhere because alizarin crimson like a genuine alizarin crimson is fugitive but now there are um alizarin crimson hues they're made with crinacridones I believe and they're they're very permanent so just make sure you have a permanent alizarin crimson I think it's PR83 which is the true alizarin crimson that is fugitive don't quote me on it but I'm pretty I'm like 95% sure I'm right on that one um and then I did some mixing with these colors now I did actually I didn't use that color. I didn't realize when I popped it in there that it's exactly the same as that. Um, but I did add a Lucas Studio magenta just because I like to have a magenta in my palette. So that was about the only difference. Um, so then what I did was um, after mixing lovely arrays of colors, I actually took the Viridian color, which is not a color I really care for personally. Um, it's just so synthetic to me. And I started adding it with other colors that are in the palette to make this beautiful array of greens. And I really like the Viridian plus Cat Orange. I thought that made a beautiful beautiful green. It's also pretty with yellow ochre um, and lots of other I mean look at it with ultramarine it's a beautiful teal but okay anyway the thing I wanted to mention about this being an older set and in the mirror and an American set is that it actually does contain four genuine cadmium pigments and a genuine cobalt and looking on their website now I do not even see that they make genuine cobalts and cadmiums in the uh, Cotman line so I'm wondering how different the um, the Cotman paints are now from this set and um, I I do I have used the Cotman paints right along because I teach classes and I recommend like the Cotman sketchbox set just because it's so affordable and I know everybody's using the same quality supplies so and and they seem to be on par with these just no genuine cadmiums and I think that might have to do with the Windsor Newton being in the UK and um, there there was like a big cadmium issue like 2000 13 I think and the cadmium was banned a, a lot of places even though if you use your paints properly you should not have any problem with cadmium in your paint just know that um, but that for that reason I don't let my kids use this palette um, so anyways well I'll give you a I'll give you a glimpse it's well loved uh, 
me open it. It's a little tough to open. I always set it down and open it because I'm afraid I'm going to fling my palette, my pans everywhere. Um, and I actually did lose one of my, I lost the pan, one of the, uh, one of my pans. It was the Alizarin Crimson. And so I popped the white out of the, uh, out of the pan and then I refilled the plastic pan. Um, but that's what it looks like just to give you, uh, a look. And another thing I want to recommend, and it doesn't have to be this brand. This is the Zen, um, watercolor half inch filbert. It's also 13 millimeters and it's number, oh gosh. I don't know if I can read that with all my glasses. Uh, Z83PO. It's by Royal and Lane Nickel. But I really like the shape. It's a synthetic animal hair. So it's actually synthetic, but it's meant to uh, mimic animal hair. But I like the Spilbert shape. And this is only a couple bucks at Michael's. Um, you can get whatever you, Neptune or Mimic or whatever brand you want. But I really think this is a versatile brush to have in the field because, uh, of course, you will need a bucket of water because it's not a water brush. But um, you can really wet an area really well and cover some ground quickly and also get on the point of the brush and get nice detail. So it's got a big fat body to hold lots of water and pigment and, and you can get a fairly fine detail on the tip of that. Uh, so I just wanted to recommend a brush of that type if you are field painting or even painting in the studio because it's very versatile. Now, while I was contemplating while I was working with those Cotman's, I thought, boy, I, the UK, in the UK they sell a Cotman set, but they actually, instead of having 24 full pans, it's got 45 half pans, and the Cotman line only has 40 colors, so five colors are duplicated, so I treated myself to this. I bought it on Amazon, and but it came from the UK, um, but it was only $48, and I thought that was a great deal. These are all in their own little plastic pans. They're individually wrapped. Pigment information is on the wrapper, so what I did was I actually wrote down the pigment information on the little swatch sheet that came with it just so I would have that because I I know I will lose these wrappers I although I can't even I don't even want to unwrap them <laughs> I want to just leave them pristine like this but they duplicate the um the popular colors they duplicate alizarin crimson hue and let's see what they're using for the pigment on that they're using PR206 so not the genuine so and it is um an A, permanence A rating. So that's pretty good. I think AA is best. A is pretty good. Um, and then they duplicate yellow ochre, ultramarine blue. They also duplicate Chinese white, which, meh. I could always pop it out and use the pan. Um, and they duplicate ivory black. And ivory black is an interesting color. Even if you don't use black, um, ivory black is in quite a few mixes. It's in, you'll see it in mixes where they want your colors to granulate, like a Payne's Gray sometimes or an indigo, because it does granulate. So that's kind of an interesting quality if you want to do a mix and have that granulation and that texture. Um, and what else? They say, yeah, those are the five colors they duplicate. I think I mentioned all five, ultramarine blue. Um, so yeah, so I did grab that. For, I, figured, I figured 45 colors, $48. You really can't beat it. And there's no, there is no genuine cadmiums or cobalt here. So um, I, why am I doing a review? This wasn't supposed to be a review. Anyway, ah, I can let the kids use it and not worry about the, uh, the content of cadmium and whatnot. So let's get on to what I painted. Holy cow. What are we, like 25 minutes into this video? Oh my gosh. Um, so the first day we got there was Saturday. We could go Saturday. We got there in the afternoon. We unpacked. Um, went for a swim, then the thunder clouds rolled in, crazy thunderstorm, and then it cleared off. And when it cleared off, we had a beautiful sunset. And so I grabbed my paints and my water brush and hurriedly just painted this scene from the dock. And I was getting chewed by mosquitoes. It took me about, I don't know, less than 10 minutes. And I wish that I had the cup of water and my other brush. This was like as, as soon as I started, basically, because I couldn't keep up with my paper drying. This is Fabriano Studio. That's what I made my blocks with. Um, I did a landscape block here. I took my 11 by 14 uh, paper and cut it into thirds. So I had like, it was like four and a half or four and three quarters, somewhere around there. I'm not great at math, by 11. And that's the size of my block. And I really liked working in a different size. I found that very fun. Now, one thing I want to warn you is I went a little heavy handed with my glue gun and the glue was kind of thick so it was uh, difficult. I was able to remove the papers but every few sheets I had to go in with a uh, knife and slice off the extra glue so a little dabble do ya when you're making your watercolor block so just to let you know I went a little heavier with this just to see because it was a bigger paper but it's not necessary. Go light with your glue. Uh, and this was something I did on the last day actually it's still attached to the block. I was just doodling and playing with some of my mixes with the common colors just to see how they mixed out. And they're pretty, they're vibrant. What are people complaining about? I do not know. And then I played a little bit with a gel pen there just um just highlighting and stuff just because it was fun. I, ha I haven't used a gel pen in my work before and I 
I, I just threw it in my bag and I really enjoyed that mixed media element of it. Not a traditional watercolor, so just to let you know, it would not, you wouldn't be able to enter that in a traditional watercolor competition if that was what you were up to, but it's fun and I really had a good time playing with that, especially travel sketching when you're just capturing something quickly in the moment. You know, you're spending five or ten minutes on a sketch. It's not going to hang in a museum. You can have fun with it. I give you permission to have fun with your art. I'm more about fun art than fine art. I'll be the first to admit it, okay? So, comments are horrible. People are going to be telling that right now. And that gel pen, oh my gosh, Lindsay, don't use a gel pen with you. Just, I wait. The, the comments will go something like this. The first one will be like, first, and the second will be, comments are horrible. And the third one's, real artists don't use gel pens. I can almost like, pre I'm like psychic. I can predict the comments. And I bet there's a thumbs down on it already, or two or three. I don't know. What's wrong with people? <laughs> And uh, this was also just like one of my last sketches, just a quick little slice of watermelon. They were on the table, just sketching what I saw. Um, okay, let's see. I've got, and I've got, since I did make a couple different blocks, I have a couple different size paintings here. Um, and I was just kind of getting in the habit of sketching whatever I saw. There were citronella candles and buckets on the, um, on the porch. I sketched that. This one I really enjoyed. This was from sitting on the dock looking at the shore. I really enjoyed these rocks. I might do this as a live stream on Friday. I'm not sure. Please let me know in the comments below if you like any of these paintings and you'd like to see me do a tutorial on them because I'd be more than happy to. Um, oh, and I come here, don't let me forget, I want to tell you about some other fun projects I have coming up in the next couple of weeks on my channel. So for those of you that are so sick of me painting. I should have led with that. I should have really led with that. There's going to be, there's going to be more diverse projects. I have some fabric painting, uh, some stamping, uh, party crafts, a bunch of different things that we'll be working on. Uh, DIY scratch boards, lots of lots of fun projects. So that was one I really enjoyed painting. Um, this was really fun. I was sitting on the ground. I got to back it up a little bit. Sitting on the ground looking up at a birch tree and I, this was actually a very quick project and I really enjoyed working in this size, working it portrait style instead of landscape. I had a really good time with that. Um, this one was not, I did not care for this, how this turned out so much. This was painted from um, a kayak and uh, the wind was bad. I was being kind of moved around as I was trying to paint. It was, I was worried about losing my paint in the water because it was very, um, very turbulent, but, um, but still it kind of broke the ice that day. And that's, you know, my paintings, I, I like to kind of just hop in and start creating and not really worry about the outcome too much. There were shells and there were no shells there, obviously we're on a pond and, uh, but there was a dish of shells in the camp and I just set them down on the coffee table one morning and painted it while I drank my coffee just to kind of warm up for the day. I like cotton watercolors. I think they do fine. Um, this was, I was actually laying in the sun there, everything is covered with this moss. It's really soft and spongy. And I had my blanket on there and I was just laying in the sun and I was looking out over the pond and I could see, and I mean, just loved all the layers of light. Like this tree was next to me and this moss was all lit up and then there was shady over there. And then you could see the water and then you could see the mountain with the cliffs um, across the pond. And I just really love that perspective. And so I quickly just sketched it out in pen and all the pen work is just a fine tip Sharpie. I just brought that. I'm like, I'm not going to worry about losing that. If something happens to it, oh well, you know, and I can also write my name on my drink so they don't get mixed up. So, I mean, Hey, double purpose, make your supplies really do double duty when you're on vacation. Um, and then this, oh, I had strawberries. So I laid some down on a, on a um, plate and I was painting and I was feeling it was very overworked and I was very, getting very frustrated. But um, all in all, actually, like, I really like the way the uh, the leaves came out on that one. So um, I just enrolled in Anna Mason's painting realistic fruit class. So hopefully, I'm sure she'll have some pointers. I know she paints very differently than I do. Um, but I think I, I really um, encourage people to take classes from different people or watch videos from different people and get a well-rounded education and then figure out what um, techniques you like from me, what techniques you like from Anna Mason, what techniques you like from Angela Fair, what techniques you like from Steve Mitchell, you know, pick from these different people and create your own style. I think it's very important. I'll link that class uh, that Anna Mason has on the strawberry. Hers looks very realistic. Mine looks very sketchy, but uh, I'll link that down below and you can check that out. And of course, any craftsy class you purchase through my links does help my channel and I do appreciate it. So thank you. Uh, but I will link that. And then I went another attempt at it and it really wasn't much better, but I did use nicer paper. So all this paper was Fabriano studio that I was using all these uh, rectangles. And then I found a scrap of arches in my bag and I'm like, oh, well, maybe if I use this expensive paper, my painting will be fantastic. It's really not any better. See, it's more about the artist, less about the materials sometimes, guys. For all of everybody that's complaining about cotton and paints and student grade this and student grade that. 
And then um, I also had a smaller thing. So my daughters love to fish. My son loves to fish too. And they were catching sunfish in a bucket because you really don't want to hook them. They're too fragile. Um, and so they had this clear bucket and they caught a sunfish. And so I very quickly tried to tried to sketch it because uh, I didn't want it in the bucket too long. It was seeming kind of stressed out. So I just quickly sketched it and threw on some watercolors quickly as I could because they're much brighter. When you get a sunfish up in the sun, kind of like in like a clear bucket, you they're really bright. They look very dull in the water, but you can really see the yellows and the blues and the greens in them when they're, when they're up in clear water. Um, so that was super quick because I didn't want to stress out the fish. Um, this was actually from a book because I didn't, it was raining and I didn't really, it wasn't really inspired by much. So I thought I would just on some sketching and actually that was all done with watercolor no pens um just mixing my colors again cotman um this was done this i was so seasick when i when i sketched that um, we had taken the canoe out across the pond and there's a place you can kind of a dock and um and there's all these wild blueberry bushes and my daughter got out but i didn't dare to get out of the canoe because i didn't have anything to tie it up with um and i didn't want to be stranded on the other side of the pond so I was sitting in the canoe just kind of sketching and the waves were so bad and I was so seasick. I was sitting on the floor of the canoe looking um, along the shore and I was just, I had to stop. I was just, I kind of feel a little seasick just looking at that picture now. Uh, this was just the, I, I found some leaves that had already started to turn and that was a little upsetting, but they're also really pretty. So I sketched that really quick with some watercolors. I did not use pen on that. I did not use a black pen on that. I did actually highlight with a little uh, white gel pen and then washed over it, but then I didn't really care for that. But, um, but it was a fun little painting to do. And this was that cliff that was across the, um, across the pond. It's just this big sheer rock face. And I just did a detail of that so I would remember it. And, um, oh, when I was out in the kayak that, when I did that horrible painting, well, one of the horrible paintings on the kayak. <laughs> It's not about the it's not about the product. It's about the process, guys. That's what I'm trying. That's why I show you the not so great ones, so you know it's about the process, not the product. So I just did a little detail of those little purple flowers I see all the time, and then I did a little pen detail work just so I could see how each of the little blossoms you see a little dab represents each of these blossoms, and that's what the blossoms look like. And I also did a sketch of the leaf just so I'd have a better in my mind representation of what that was, and then I just did a little a little fern, nothing too um, exciting there. Oh, I gotta go get my bigger sketchbook because I have another thing I wanna show you from there. So hang on a second. Okay, I'm back. Oh, quick tip, don't leave your sketchbook out in the rain. It, it actually rained more this week than it ever has before. And I left this outside. I had, I was trying to catch the look of, um, I just wanna get to that. I only did one painting in this, this trip. I just wanted to get the look of pockets of mist. It was so foggy one morning. This, gosh, this paper's still damp. Um, it was so foggy one morning that I, you couldn't even see across the pond to the mountain on the other side. And as the fog lifted, I wanted to capture these pockets of trees and mist. And I didn't really do a very good job, but something I wanted to show you here, and this is just a Strathmore field journal. I don't know if it's a 500 series with that's cotton or if it's wood pulp. I think it's wood pulp. It doesn't feel like cotton. Um, but anyways, I took the bevel edge on that brush that I recommended and I just scraped up. And when you use like the end of a brush that's got the bevel edge versus a credit card scraper, you actually get a lighter line because it kind of squeegees the paint out of the way. Um, if I had done that with a credit card scraper, I would have got dark tree trunks. So I just wanted to share that tip with you. But anyways, this is a uh, this was, I gotta go back. I wanna try mist again because I didn't get, I didn't get a very good representation, but these are a little warped now because I, I uh, left that out in the rain. Uh, what I intended to do, cause I painted this from up from the deck, from the camp. And I, then I walked down thinking I would work on it more, a little bit closer to shore, but I never got around to it cause it started raining and I completely forgot it was there. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, I'm a dingbat. <laughs> But it's all right because I was out painting and I think you should really try that too. And that's another reason I like to bring not my most expensive stuff. First of all, these paintings are not going to be framed. They're going to be, you know, in my scrapbook probably. And I don't have to really worry about light fading things. Not that I think the Cotman's would really fade. Um, but it just gives me, it, you know, I don't have to worry about losing something or something getting left in the rain. It's nothing that I can't replace fairly affordably. So that's kind of my take on it. All right. That's my opinion. I welcome yours. So coming up this week, I have a lot of fun things. I have fabric painting with Radiance watercolors. I have some Apple for Teacher gifts. I have um, DIY scratch board. I have the live show on Friday, which I cannot wait for because I miss you guys. And uh, lots of 
fun stamping painting stuff don't worry it's not all painting it's just a lot easier for me to handle doing quick little paintings in the summer when I'm busy with my kids and my family and just enjoying the main summer thank you so much for watching and until next time happy crafting